figured you might want some video of this. Yeah, that's awesome. That display you got here. Oh yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Basically what they call is a glass cockpit. Right. Alright, Defuniac Airport, RV 54 Tango Zulu taking runway 27, departure to the west, negative return. Inter er, Defuniac. Good crosswind. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I, I haven't taken off from anything on this airport since I was like seven years old. <laughs> Airspace around here because the Eglin's kind of complicated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of restricted areas around here. Right. Good afternoon, Eglin. Uh, approach RV54 Tango Zulu 1200, just off the west end of uh, Defuniac. Number five, four, zero, zero. I'm going to approach squad four, six, four, zero. Four six four zero four Tango Zulu. I'm gonna run down to uh, over Destin, then fly down the beach back to the east. Number five four Tango Zulu radar contact two miles west of Defuniac Springs north south correct north south north south quarter five two <laughs> via field two then White Point via for out to your screen. That's easy for you to say. Uh, corridor approved, Fort Tango Zulu. Yeah, so there's a corridor that you got to fly. Right. Yeah, the north-south, and there's then there's the east-west along the coast, right? Yeah. yeah. I've seen before, and I guess it depends on what's going on with them, but I've seen them, or heard them before on the radio, clearing someone direct at this thing. Yeah. yeah, it depends on if the Just restricted area is hot. Right. right. Contact us in tower 18.45. Good day. Yeah, I'm trying to get my, uh, not trying to, I think I succeeded, but I've got my kid into airplanes. Yeah. So we go down to Destin a lot and walk out there with the radio and just watch them land and take off. And he loves that. So when we hit the quarter and go down, uh, there's like just certain uh, landmarks we report into. Uh, it's field two, white point. Right. Yeah, I've heard them as they're coming into Destin. About white point. Occasionally, they'll ask if they see the, the flag. On yeah, the, that's uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's actually called flag. Okay. Uh, it's uh on the on the bridge. Right. So the north side of the bridge is uh, white point. South side of the bridge at the marina is flag. Okay. Do you want to fly it? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so pick a point out there that you can see, right? Okay. And fly towards it. Okay, this is our altitude here, right? So it's it's actually fairly sensitive in pitch. Okay. Ooh. So in roll, you know, you do that. So basically, when we want to follow that purple line, and we want to stay about 3,800 feet. Easier if you're not doing the death grip. It literally yeah. takes this much pressure to yeah. actually fly yeah. it. And those little bumps side to side, just kind of let it go with it because the plane plane will kind of like self right it. Right. Okay. So you know if it if it really banks over, then then correct it. But these little bumps like this, right. just pick your spot out on the distance. Three, four. 
thousand. Okay, see the top of the bridge there? I do. Okay, let's head for the top of the bridge. All right. Because that's Eglin Air Force Base, and right. if somebody's either taking in or out of there, that's the main runway that come in over that part. Right. So we don't really want to be in their airspace. Right. You're on 686, descend to maintain 3000. When able to report, destined in sight, 11 o'clock, 15 miles. So you've got pilotage, so you're, you've, you're timing on your map, you know how long each leg should be, you've, right. you've, you've uh, looked up winds aloft before you go, and you're calculating it that way. Then you also have just dead reckoning. I see the top of the bridge. Right. I'm flying to the top of the bridge. I'm maintaining my altitude. Right. Piloting. Uh, then you have what's uh, instruments. So you got uh, instrument flight rules. So you basically fly along and you just keep your heading and you keep your altitude and there's there's our artificial horizon right there. Right. This has actually got um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, terrain, simulated terrain. Oh, cool. So it's actually, so, so that's the edge of the water right, right there. So instead of just a flat green yeah. to blue or whatever, yeah. yeah. So you can actually see terrain and right. Uh, if there was a tower here, the little towers show up as the orange or yellow. Yeah. Until you get down to within 500 feet of their their height, then they turn in red. They like going, "Hey, mean I want to run into this." Right. That's cool. Yeah. See, my, my wife, all these little bumps. She would not like that. Four Tango Zulu, Starfire, going over Destin and turning eastbound. Yeah, we're gonna go over White Point, flag, then head eastbound down the coastline. Four Tango Zulu, Roger. I'm sorry, sir. You said two thousand. Drop it down a little bit on the altitude. I'm gonna put you Charlie. What's that? I was dropping down a little bit on the altitude to try to ease back up some. Alright, you can start banking over that direction. Alright. Do I need to give it any rudder or anything? Or just just, just, a, little, just a little left. This one Okay, so there's the ball there, so that's too much left. Okay. So basically you step on the the, the direction the ball is on. So, the 2184 so you may you need to put a little right rudder into it yeah. to stay coupled. So Contact two miles in the Drop down about 2,500 feet. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's a 331 bridge. Well, yeah, that's 331 bridge. Yeah, that's 331 for yeah. sure. Eglin approach, RV 54 Tango Zulu. Uh, 54 Tango Zulu, go ahead. Yeah, uh, let us know when we can turn direct back up to the Phoenix. 54 Tango Zulu, approve your request. All right, approve your request. 54 Tango Zulu. They're just going straight up there? Yep. Okay. So, basically follow the purple line. Okay. So just turn it until we're lined up. You can turn, you can make it over a little more. Okay. I didn't say altitude. Said approved as requested. That was pretty much like your approved. Yeah. Two, three, zero. So uh, basically, I requested, you know, let us know when we can go direct to Dutiac. And he goes, approved as requested. So we're heading straight to Dutiac, even though we're cutting across right across this restricted area. Right. But we still have to miss this one. That one is always active. 2917. Yeah. I believe that's Site C6. That's the uh, uplink facility. Right. Yeah. 
fantastic. I, I'm having the time of my life, man. I, <laughs> this is really fun. I really, really appreciate you doing this. Okay. No problem. All right, let me have the controls. Absolutely. <laughs> Get up a little altitude here. Do a little negative G. Woo! I like that. <laughs> See, I love all that. My wife would be freaking out right there. <laughs> she also gets motion sickness, too. Oh, okay, yeah. 2095 is going to maintain 1,600. Yeah, that's fine. I, I like that. Uh, this actually has a G meter in it. So we actually got down to zero G right there. We did so we got two G's positive. Right. Do what's called a clearing turn. Make sure nobody's right around us. I don't think they are anyway, but you, you, you have to do clearing turns before you start to do any sort of air maneuvers. Right. So you do a 90 left and a 90 right. No further left turns for secure assist. I'm sorry, sir, you get stepped on. Repeat that, please. What a stall is. Okay. So basically, as we slow down, we want to keep the ball centered, so when it, it breaks, we, we drop nose straight down right. instead of falling off to one side. Right. And the uh, this thing was at this much throttle. Just about won't stall. Yeah, we just. Uh, we'll be full stop, Justin. Four three two Charlie Delta runner. So uh, we're we're down to seventy five knots. Pull out a little more throttle. Yeah. Keep pitching up. Up, up, 58, 55, Remember, 50. Now feel that buffeting? Yes, yeah. That's how this thing stalls. Okay. Okay. That's, that's the extent of it. Wow. Uh, no, let, let me do one fully power off, and it'll actually kind of break. And all you do to recover is just nose down. Nose down, give it throttle. Right. And we're flying again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, getting that airflow over the wing, back over the wings. Yeah. Woo! Number 721, Charlie Alpha, are you going to approach the Agon? <laughs> That's fine. That's a lot of fun. November 2, Charlie Delta, proceed direct white point, then Dustin. Actually, a very white responsive point, plane. Yeah. Yeah. You just look out on the horizon, uh -huh. and you keep the horizon level. Remember to Charlie Delta. And you can pull it in tighter. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun. It, yeah. November 2, Charlie Delta, contact Dustin Tower, 118.5. That is a lot of fun. Over Dustin Tower, see ya. Yep. Hey, when uh, Helicopter 3, Charlie Tego is now over Highway 20, may I proceed back to the east, heading to the Horsepower Pavilion? Thank you. So we did 2.8 Gs, positive, z zero. We went down to zero Gs. Eglin approach, RV 54 Tango Zulu has the Puniac in sight. RV 54 Tango Zulu, Roger, change to advisory frequency approved. Squawk and VFR, change in frequency, have a great day. Four Tango Zulu. To Puniac Springs Airport, RV 54 Tango Zulu on a nine mile left base, runway 27 to Puniac. Yeah, 
coming up on I-10, the airport out there, like Juniper out there. Yeah, that's the one thing I, I'm familiar with the area from the air, mm -hmm. thanks to that. But yeah, as far as commercial aviation flying U.S. carriers, you're more likely to get killed by a donkey. I mean, it it is literally 0.003 percent right fatality rate per hundred thousand miles right traveled. Yeah, and, and that's that's virtually. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're, it's, you're it's just guaranteed. almost a non -ash issue. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Phoenix Springs Airport, RV54 Tango Zulu on a four mile final, runway 27 to Phoenix. Usually we'd fly the pattern, come in, fly downwind, right, and that, but with uh, basically no traffic in the area, it's kind of a waste, right. And with the ADSB in, so I've got ADSB in on this one and a separate ADSB on, in on this one. So I've got, you know, basically uh, two separate versions of the ADSB to. Finia traffic, right. Romeo Juliet, five mile final, runway 27 to Finia. Finia tra traffic, RV54 Tango Zulu, three mile final, runway 27 to Finia. I'll be quick off the runway. I, I was about to say, like, you said no traffic and then somebody shows up. Right, we'll be uh, landing and then uh, taxiing to the FBO. So I gotta slow it down below 100 knots to to get the flaps out. Right. But since I got this butt guy behind me, I'm gonna maintain my speed a little bit longer before I dump all the flaps into it. Right. So there's two ways to handle a crosswind. You can grab, like we're doing now. Right. You know, basically the nose of the plane. Or you can do wing low, which you put in the left rudder to straighten us out. Then you've got to keep fly the plane a little bit sideways to stay to keep it from drifting. Right. And there's light winds like this. Uh, I'll do wing low. Uh, higher cross winds, I'll fly in crab, and then dump the the rudder in right at the end. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit of a side slip to dump some altitude. So basically, yep. I'm flying the plane sideways. Defunia traffic, eight Romeo Juliet, three mile final Bring it runway. Back in. Two, seven, get my rudder in, get back on the center line, and just slowly round out. You don't want to really flare. You just want to round out, let the plane run out of energy, and touch the ground. Since the guy behind us, we'll go ahead and grab this taxiway here. That's a super sl slow or super short rollout to the taxiway right there from touchdown to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this thing will do fairly short fields. Tuniac, uh, RV54 Tango Zulu, clear the active runway to Tuniac. Air conditioning? Yeah. <laughs> 